There are three crypto sectors which I believe are going to be the pillars of next cycle, and thus I am positioning my portfolio concentrated around these three sectors. In front of you on the screen right now, you can see the historical snapshot of the market during the peak of the 2017 bull run. Take a look around. Look at the top 50. How many coins here didn't end up featuring in the 2021 bull run? You've got Lisk, you've got Omizgo, you've got Stratus, BitShares, Ardor, Hypercash, Bitcoin, etc. All these ancient relics ended up fading into oblivion come the 2021 cycle where we saw coins like Polkadot, coins like Terra, Avalanche, Solana all outperform and exhibit massive gains versus their old counterparts. So if you go into this next cycle, investing in the old relics of last cycle and not addressing the current problems we have in crypto right now, I think you are in for a rude awakening come the next bull run. So instead, why not focus on the biggest problems of next cycle? Be preemptive here and start anticipating what some of the biggest upcoming trends are going to be. Then you can reverse engineer that process and start building the foundational blocks of your portfolio now, setting yourself up for success in next cycle. So today I want to talk about three major verticals that I am eyeing in crypto and I'm positioning my portfolio around because I believe they're going to be three of the biggest sectors next cycle. I'm also going to give you coin picks from each of these sectors um, and give you my strategy with each individual category. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Now, the first major sector in crypto that I think is undeniable as the driving force behind crypto's price performance and also the lifeblood uh, of a lot of the market is simply speculation. I mean, just think about it. Humans are innately gamblers. The entire premise of the stock market's growth over the last century has essentially been people speculating on asset prices going up in the future. Crypto is the biggest and most accessible casino in the world, so when it comes to human speculation, it is definitely well positioned for significant upside. Now, as long as humans exist, I believe that their desire to speculate will exist because humans are innately gamblers, and for that reason, I'm bullish on human greed. So when it comes to crypto, how can you position yourself on the premise that humans will want to speculate next cycle? Well, in my opinion, there are really two growth verticals here when it comes to human speculation. Yes, it is the most basic of the three narratives of today's video, but it is also like the most obvious one. Um, crypto's use case, whether we like it or not, is gambling and is speculation. And for that reason, you can divide this up into A, gambling platforms that facilitate uh, people's ability to speculate, and two, platforms like DEXs that allow people to speculate on the market specifically. So when it comes to gambling platforms, I think it's undeniable, like Rollbit, for example, has been uh, a major prominent pillar of this sector, given the fact that it's been able to do over $25 million of 30-day casino revenue, and as a result, has burnt $5.3 million worth of Rollbit tokens. This is an example of a protocol that is really primed to capture that human greed factor, considering it offers a casino product, a crypto futures product, and a sports revenue product. I haven't seen many other great gambling platforms in crypto launch. So for today's video, I think Rollbit is the obvious selection here. But as they start to launch and as some better products start to come out in this niche, definitely gambling platforms is something I have on my horizon because as I said, I'm bullish on human greed. Now, if you look at Rollbit's fees, you can also see that comparatively, it stacks up pretty well to the rest of the market with it actually generating more in the past 30 days than the blockchain Tron, the biggest DEX on Ethereum Uniswap, the Bitcoin network, it's only behind ETH and Lido in terms of revenue generation. So that's a super interesting vertical. Now, the other vertical in terms of capturing speculation next cycle is, of course, the DEXs. Because if you view crypto as the ultimate casino, then in this world, the exchanges by default become the house. Now, when retail comes back, volume returns, volatility returns, and more importantly, risk appetite returns, which in my opinion, it inevitably will, then the DEXs and the centralized exchanges are going to be the biggest beneficiaries. But due to the recent regulations surrounding centralized exchanges and due to the transformative shift we have seen over the last few months from centralized exchange trading to DEX trading, I think DEXs, considering this environment, are going to be some of the major beneficiaries when it comes to capturing revenue from what we call the crypto casino. So I am looking to position myself in the top DEXs in the market, the top-notch products, which have a clean and intuitive UI, because I believe that stickiness comes from a great user experience. 
a diverse range of trading pairs and prompt listings of the new hottest crypto coins and products, competitive fees, and strong referral programs. Because we know exchanges like Bybit were built around really strong referral programs and a DEX is going to need to capture that in order to fully harness its growth potential. So at the end of the day, it comes down to user experience. When we can get a centralized exchange-like experience on a DEX, then I think there is really an incentive considering crypto regulation for people to actually use these DEXs. Now, what are some of the products I'm looking at? GMX clearly has been one of the leaders in this sector. Uh, it's also heavily discounted in price since its highs. This is definitely one that I've got on my list. Gains Network as well is another one that I've got on my list, considering the fact that it supports 64 trading pairs. They've also got Forex and commodities. So it's not just crypto that you can speculate on on the blockchain. And there's also a bunch of other features that they offer. They give up to 150x leverage. I mean, that, that by definition appeals to the DGENs. Um, they give 250x leverage on commodities and 1000x on Forex in some cases. They also support collateral deposits up to 250k. And DAI is also a stablecoin supported as collateral. Um, they also have a few interesting features like lookbacks for better execution, one-click trading for a better trading experience. So in terms of like current trading products that are on the market right now, in the DEX form, I think G-Trade um, and more broadly, the, the Gains Network team are doing a really good job at pioneering this space. Now, of course, Gains is a partner of the show. If you do want to trade on G-Trade, there is a link in the description. If you haven't yet, I think you are missing out because it's an amazing trading experience. And for those that are looking for a new trading home, um, I think this is one of the best products on the market right now. Another DEX that I'm looking at is DYDX. These guys are going for a really novel and pretty ambitious approach to solving the DEX problem with their own chain. They did decide to leave Ethereum and launch their own chain on Cosmos. That's super bold. If it fails, it could fail spectacularly, but if it pays off, it could really pay off spectacularly due to the additional composability that deploying on Cosmos gives you over deploying an EVM application. So this could be a massive success. We don't know yet, but if it is, um, it's definitely something that I'm interested in getting exposure to. Just keep in mind that there is a big token unlock coming. I am expecting DYDX to issue some sort of big announcement to try and offset some of the sell pressure, but just keep in mind that there is a bunch of sell pressure coming and you're probably going to want to DCA slowly into this one as not to take on any unnecessary risk during a bear market. Now, I've got one more option for you if you're interested in this whole speculation DEX narrative and that's Say Network. So you don't just have to bet on the specific DEXs, you can bet on the infrastructure, the platforms that are facilitating speculation and Say by default, is a layer one blockchain that is specifically being built for traders because they're offering fast finality, which is very important when it comes to executing trading, a twin turbo consensus mechanism, which is very important for the overall performance of the network. They have a native matching engine that allows exchange teams to leverage that to build their own exchange products. And also they have front running protection built into the layer one blockchain. So pretty much what you need to know is Say is a blockchain built specifically for trading applications. And if you want exposure to this narrative, this is definitely an interesting one. Price-wise, it's essentially been down only since its launch, but this is one that I'm looking at accumulating, um, maybe let's say over the next six months to a year, slowly accumulating to position myself in this narrative. Uh, I think Say is a super interesting, unique bet. Okay, now let's get into sector number two, and that is real world assets. DeFi has a big problem right now. The interest rates across the world have increased significantly since 2021, so there's less of an incentive to stake money in DeFi yield farms. I mean, back in 2021, when interest rates were essentially zero, people were desperate and they were starved for yield, so they were parking capital in DeFi where you could get 10 to 20% in your stable coins, 20 to 30% on your Ethereum. It was amazing, right? Well, those days are over, and now for DeFi to succeed and become sustainable, it's going to need avenues to attract capital into the ecosystem. And I think the number one vertical for this is real world assets. So that's essentially tokenizing assets like real estate, gold, collectibles, cars, and intangible assets like equities, bonds, carbon credits, and trade finance, and bringing it on chain in the form of a token and enabling users on chain to deposit into vaults to earn yield on real life assets. So if that is a property, it can be divisible into a bunch of tokens offered on chain. So you can essentially invest into a property instead of going through the rigmarole of investing it in real life with big barriers to entry, you can take a lesser barrier to entry 
and divide it up into a bunch of fractions to allow people to invest and earn yield on that property on chain. But bonds are another example. Instead of having to go through a traditional trading house and centralized entities, which take huge transaction and management fees, you can go straight peer to peer on a DeFi or crypto product, which allows you to invest in things like bonds and treasury bonds. So it's super interesting, um, the real world asset space. And as you can see, the Boston Consulting Group expects this space to 26x from $0.6 trillion to $16 trillion by the year 2030, with their high case, so their bullish case, being $68 trillion, which is 113x from the current uh, market cap of real world assets. So this could potentially be a whole lot of money coming into the crypto ecosystem. So clearly real world assets are a massive growth vertical. And this is one that I'm interested in positioning myself towards because if we do see a massive influx of tokenized assets coming on chain, this could be a huge attraction for new TVL to come into the crypto market. Now, in terms of positioning myself for real world assets, there's a few ways you can do it. The first way is essentially betting on individual real world asset protocols. And this is probably your most direct way, but it's also the riskier way because even if real world assets succeed, if a specific protocol fails, then your investment could still go to zero. The safer way, but the less upside way would simply to be to invest in the blockchains, the L1s, the L2s that you believe in and you think are going to be home to the tokenization of assets. Because at the end of the day, these blockchains make sequence of fees and revenue, which in some cases are paid back to holders. So the overall value of the chain increases. However, as you guys know, you're not getting as much upside, of course. So you've kind of got to decide whether you want to go for a protocol based approach or an infrastructure based approach. I like to do a little bit of both because then I can capture some of the massive upside, um, but I can also have some safer bets to hedge uh, against some of the protocol specific bets. In terms of protocol specific plays, my favorite one's Frax. I've talked about this a lot in the past, but they're doing a lot with their V3. They've got Frax Lend. Um, they're not just a real world asset protocol. They've got exposure to other niches as well, um, to hedge as well. So I do like Frax as a play. This is my personal favorite one in this sector. MakerDAO is also interesting. I don't own any and I'm not planning on buying any anytime soon, but this has definitely been the, the leader of this narrative considering that they've been able to accrue over $600 million worth of vault value thanks to their importation of treasury yields on chain. So this has been a really successful one, but I'm also seeing many different real estate products, collectibles, marketplaces, and super interesting products starting to launch in the real world asset space. So this is definitely one where you want to keep some capital aside and look to position yourself in this one uh, over the next few months. This is definitely one of the biggest growth verticals next cycle, especially if we can get anywhere close to that $68 trillion figure that BCG did suggest as a potential growth target by the year 2030. All right, let's get into sector number three. We We've talked about speculation, so that's DEXs, gambling platforms. We've talked about real world assets being one of the major solutions to the TVL issue in DeFi, which is such a prominent crypto ecosystem. Now let's talk about the third sector, which is AI. This is a really interesting one because this is where you get the convergence of two of the most major technological breakthroughs of the century. One being AI and the other one being cryptocurrency and blockchain. They're really revolutionary products in their own right. If you start to see confluence between these, the merging of these two narratives, I think we're going to get some pretty powerful applications in the future. The first thing to note is that the AI sector is expected to increase by 20x by the year 2030. So there's no doubt this is a sector with huge upside. But I think the major doubt people have is the current synergy between AI and crypto isn't that apparent given the current products available on the market. Avichal from Electric Capital, who I did an interview with a few months ago, said AI is the future, but AI and crypto isn't there yet. He says, I think AI and crypto is a little bit early right now, but 10 years from now, I think these worlds absolutely converge. And this is also basically the premise of how I'm investing in the AI sector. So right now, I'm basically focusing on the infrastructure side and I'm focusing on protocols which are going to facilitate the future growth of AI, but I'm not investing in many AI AI specific tokens. So render would be a good example of infrastructure. Essentially, they decentralize GPU power. That's going to be a really important prerequisite for AI products building on the blockchain in the future. Storage protocols like Arweave and Filecoin are going to be important to store all this additional data as well. And then you've got cloud computing projects like Akash, which are also on the infrastructure side, allowing you to store data in the cloud. So these infrastructure plays are one way for you to get roundabout exposure to AI. You can also take AI proxy 
Bet. So these are AI coins that the market views as synonymous with AI. For example, FET, Agix, um, Ocean, and NMR. However, these products don't necessarily do the best job, in my opinion, of harnessing AI's true potential. So the real play in, in this case, in my opinion, would be to have dry powder reserve for new and unreleased projects. And in the meantime, let the projects come to the market. Let the new AI initiatives come to light and have stable coins reserved on the side so you can actually have dry powder to DCA into those projects as they launch. Because I have no doubt that in the future, AI and crypto is going to be a massive space, but we can't shoot our shot too early because we need to keep room for this to continue to develop. So in the meantime, focusing on infrastructure and keeping stable coins on the side. But AI, notwithstanding those points, um, can already be used right now to make you a better investor. So there are many amazing AI products on the market that can help you invest right now. There's AI trading bots, AI algorithms, all sorts of new products that you can actually use right now. So that's definitely the other angle of AI. It's not just investing in the sector, but it's actually utilizing it and harnessing it to make yourself a better investor and give yourself a better edge. One of the products in the space that I particularly like in this sector is Kyber AI. It's an amazing product that essentially gives you on-chain analytics for any on-chain token that you want to research. So let's take Render as an example. So let's search up Render. Um, you can see that Render right now has a super low Kyber score of 9.9. .9. This is a very bearish score. Now what the Kyber score does is essentially tracks on-chain momentum via taking into account the number of trades that are taking place, the number, the amount of trading volume taking place. Are we seeing flow from wallets into centralized exchanges? It combines all these metrics to come up with an AI amalgamated score which gives you a great tool to be able to get confluence with your own trade setup. So for example, if you're seeing in the last four hours, KyberSwap is starting to go from bearish territory into bullish territory, and you're seeing a reversal on the RSI's on your chart, and it's starting to break horizontal structure to the upside, that could help you confirm a long position that you take on chain. So there's many different ways that you can actually use this tool in order to get better entries on your trades. Now, if this does change into bullish territory, that could indicate uh, a reversal in sentiment for render. But you don't just have to use it for tokens that you search. You can actually use Kyber AI as a general market filter to find bullish tokens in the market and find bearish tokens in the market. So if the market starts to pump, you can aim to trade the bullish tokens that are starting to look really strong in terms of their on-chain metrics. And if the market starts to dump, you can actually use this to find the weak tokens to give you a better idea of what you should be shorting. For example, if you click on the bullish section here, you can see the tokens with the most bullish Kyber scores. And you can also track over the last 48 hours how their Kyber scores have developed. Have we seen a shift in sentiment? Has it been consistently bullish? And if you click on the specific token, you get all the on-chain specific metrics like types of trades like trading volume, etc., cetera, um, to help you work out whether it's something that you actually want to trade. And of course, you can search any token that you want that's available on chain, like Ethereum, um, like Gains, like any of these tokens, and you can search them and you can get live data that actually uses the power of AI um, to give you a score here. So it's a very cool product. If you do want to use it, you will need to join the waiting list because it's not available to the public. But for banter uh, users, if you use the link in the description, we're going to expedite the sign-up process to allow you to get access Access, uh, before other investors and other traders. So click the link in the description if you want to use it before anybody else. I've got one last reminder today off the back of these three sectors. I want to remind you that I just did a giveaway on yesterday's show to five people for $200 each. So if your wallet address is in bold here, you have successfully won $200 as a reward for depositing liquidity into Smartex. Right now, we are continuing to give away $1,000 to users of the Smartex platform every single week that simply provide the liquidity of their own assets into the platform. So across Arbitrum, BNB, Base, Polygon, any of the layer two networks, if you put a minimum of $50 of liquidity into any of the trading pools, we can earn 30, 40, 50% rewards on these pools. Um, you can enter the giveaway of $200 per user if you put your wallet address into the link that I provide uh, on the banter dashboard in the description. So good luck to everyone that's entering the competition for next week. Congratulations to the five people that won the $200 this week. And this $200 giveaway will only be for a limited time. 
So make sure that if you haven't entered already, you enter using the link in the description. And SmartX as a platform is also giving you an alternative to other DEXs, which allows you to mitigate the negative effects of impermanent loss. So it's also a nice AMM product that you can use if you are looking for a place to stake, provide liquidity to earn some passive income. Let me know what you thought of these three sectors in the comments below. Are there any niches that I missed? Of course, there are niches like, you know, crypto gaming. There are niches like metaverse. There are niches like L1s, L2, ZK, all of this stuff in crypto. But I tried to really break it down into three broad pillars, um, which are, of course, speculation, uh, real world assets and AI to give you an idea of like the broad sectors. And of course, subsectors like ZK can, can kind of come in underneath these sectors. But I wanted to give you more of a mental framework of how I'm thinking about the market right now to hopefully help you position your portfolios. I will see you in the next show and I hope you have a lovely day. Peace out.